In this video, Lasher is going to lift more than any human ever has in a competition training hall, other than himself in Tokyo. He is going to once again do things that no one else can do. He's going to show us all why he is the best in the world. But what this video is also going to do, and what we made a real effort to capture, was to show the story and emotions within Lasher. The candid moments when he forgets that the cameras are on him and he prepares himself nervously, anxiously, for a heavy lift. The pressure he feels from within, from himself, as well as the external pressures from everyone else in that training hall, including me, and including all of you watching him through this lens. And I promise you, he knows that we're all watching these videos. He knows that once the session is over, whatever the outcome, that it will be uploaded onto YouTube and Instagram and be seen by fans, by fellow athletes, by coaches. And that pressure that we cumulatively put on him is crushing. Lasher has not only the weight of the sport on him, he has the expectation of everybody in the sport on him. It's not like with other superstars where we excitedly watch them compete, hoping to see what they might be able to do. All of us, myself included perhaps more than anyone, have built this expectation that he's going to achieve something far beyond that of any other weightlifter that it's our right almost to see him achieve more and more, edging closer and closer to that 500 kilo total. Some people, people who know little about the sport, but they've seen an interview where an athlete explains that they make money when they set a record, believe that Lasher is breaking world records by a kilo at a time, purely for the money, and they act as though he actually owes us these ridiculous totals and is in it for the wrong reasons. But the truth is, he is breaking records at a remarkable speed. To go from being the best in the world with a 454 kilo total back in 2015 to now a 492 kilo total, nearly 40 kilos more in just six years, is so far removed from the idea that he's doing what Lu Zhaozhen or Shi Ziyong or other amazing weightlifters, quite fairly by the way, have done by breaking the world record by a kilo at a time is just preposterous. He has moved up the record by 8 kilos in just 2021 alone. The way that Lasher warms up for this session is the way that he always warms up. There's no stretching either actively or passively, there's no leg swings, there's just weightlifting. He wraps his knees, grabs a barbell and then does as most of the best weightlifters that I've ever watched, filmed or trained with do. He just starts moving with the bar. Some light squats in different foot positions, some good mornings, presses, slow or stiff-legged variations of the lifts, some pulls perhaps, a specific weightlifting warm-up. And he then muscle snatches. Sometimes he muscle snatches heavy, relatively, but before a heavy session it's just, and I say just, up to 120 kilos, 264 pounds. He did 150 kilos in the muscle snatch a few days later, but that's for another day. In fact, we are uploading another of his sessions to the Weightlifting House Patreon next week, so watch out for that. I need to talk to his coach, George Asininzi, probably my favourite coach to be around in a training hall, about why he does so many muscle snatches. The other athletes on his team do them too, but it's not so noticeable. Or at least it's not as much of a feature as it is for Lasher. It could be that it helps him focus on a straight pull. It could be that it forces him to finish in the legs through a stronger knee extension so as to avoid contact. Note, these are no contact variations that he performs. It could also be to involve the arms more in the turnover. Alternatively, it could be something as simple as it helps him feel warm, or even that he just likes to muscle snatch. And liking something in training is a valid reason to do something, especially when the barriers that you face are more mental than they are physical as with Lasher as he approaches 500 kilos. A week after this session, Lasher of course would total 492 kilos, a full 16 kilos higher than the next strongest man ever, Leonid Taranenko, that's 3.3% better. He would out clean and jerk Taranenko's 1988 clean and jerk of 266 kilos by a kilo, a lift that would certainly have received three red lights if it was done in competition nowadays. And he would also snatch 225 kilos, four reds per side, a vast increase in weight, nine kilos, more than 4% greater than any other human ever. It was the most monumental performance of the 21st century, 
not as a battle of course only person Lasher really competes with now are the expectations of his future self that we've all built up but it was the greatest individual performance perhaps ever by Sinclair Lasher now moves into the number two spot by some way a brief explanation of Sinclair for those of you who don't know is that it's a coefficient that allows you to compare weightlifters across weight categories so as to rank them fairly, essentially treating them all as super heavyweights. And this is why Lash's total is his Sinclair. At number one is Naeem Suleimanoli with 500. And then three lifters, including Yurik Vardanyan and Yuri Zakharevich, sit joint with 489 for their performances back in the 80s. Lu Zhaojun sits in number 30 of all time, with 476 Sinclair points. Someone like Shi Ziyong would be in 65th. Lasha has now moved up above all but Naeem, entering the enormous 11-point chasm that acts as a buffer of greatness between Naeem, Pocket Hercules, and the rest. So once we got to 180 kilos on the bar, I started noticing the energy in the room changing. There developed a bit of a rhythm where people began fitting in with Lash's training. They lifted while he rested. They nudged their teammates or coughed to let people know when he was about to lift. And then as Lash approached the platform, the training hall would quieten down slightly. Not totally, the Armenians in the back made up in part of his two biggest competitors, Gore and Lalian, suddenly made a point to keep lifting so as not to lose any of the mental edge that they might be trying to maintain. But in general, this pulsing rhythm of attention within the training hall is a great example of the pressure we all put on Lasha. Not only was everybody focusing on their own training, but they are focusing on his too. I don't exactly know why Lasha chose to double 180 kilos twice. It's not something I've ever seen him do before. And I would say that his second set, particularly that second rep, was nicer. And so maybe he was looking for that before he felt he could take it up. He also knew at that point that he had a big snatch double coming up at 205 kilos, the heaviest double I've ever seen, the most impressive thing outside of a single that I've ever seen for that matter. So not only was Lasher feeling the pressure of knowing that he was going to need to double 205 kilos in such a way as to confidently then make 215 kilos, but that he was going to then need to make the 215 kilos easily enough to be able to take 225 kilos for his third attempt a week later. And so to kick off that chain of events, he would need to double 180 kilos flawlessly. And so really, perhaps, the second double that he took at 180 kilos was just the precursor to being able to move 225 kilos just right. This was a particularly exciting moment, to see whether he would double or single 205 kilos, a weight that no other lifter came close to in the training hall. I also decided during this setup to actually watch him lift, rather than watching him through the camera, where you basically end up lining up his feet and his head, making sure everything is in shot, basically watching everything except for him making the lift. And it is a whole other experience just standing there, two meters away, and watching him, trusting that the camera angle is fine. It's a huge amount of pressure for Lasher. Every training session he has in the training hall involves at least three separate media companies filming him as well as the eyes of most people in that training hall. And for someone as shy and introverted as him, it's a lot to deal with. Everything that he does is recorded and watched back. And this next 30 seconds is one of my favorite things I've ever filmed. It's just Lasher in a chair, thinking about his next lift at 215 kilos, trying to calm himself down, trying to block out the noise, trying to focus and remove himself from the eyeballs that are on him the pressure from himself and the expectation from the sport. This whole next scene shows, in my opinion, an athlete who is nervous and then upon making it, overwhelmingly relieved that it's all over.
While you enjoyed this slow-mo, please consider subscribing. We're trying to hit our next milestone of 60,000 subscribers. Also, we have more Lasher content going up on the Weightlifting House Patreon page, along with other content. And make sure to head over to the Weightlifting House store for not only Lasher and George stuff, but the best weightlifting accessories in the sport. When I first started talking about 500 kilos as a total, I said it somewhat tongue-in-cheek. No one in the modern era was really pushing into the 470s, and no one in history had pushed into the high 470s. And so the idea of someone adding actual plates per side was somewhat preposterous. Honestly, now I'm at a point where I think it might actually be more likely to happen than I ever thought before. When I first began researching and writing the book, The Greatest Weightlifters of All Time, I got a good sense of the ceilings of various categories where human potential lay because I'd gone through researching how the world records would reach a certain height and then slow down until the point where they were entirely unbreakable, at which point the categories might change and the numbers would climb back up quickly but not quite reaching the old ones and then also plateau. This happened over and over and so my perception of 500 kilos was that it was akin to something like a 9 second 100 meter time. Now, I think that that comparison is definitely not accurate, as a 9 second 100 meter time is way more impressive and not ever going to be achievable. But in many ways, the comparison worked because it was just such a throwaway comment about how unlikely 500 kilos was. 500 or 9 seconds, who knows, both are never going to happen, so why work out which one is more likely? But then, as you start approaching one of them, you realise that the comparison falls apart. And in many ways, it does actually make you question other boundaries that we've dismissed as impossible. Perhaps actually a better comparison is the four minute mile. Seemingly impossible, many people got within a few seconds, and then once Roger Bannister finally broke through, many, many more followed. It's now a common monthly occurrence, but I actually think that the 500 kilo barrier is more impressive, and that Lasher is more of an outlier, because no one is capable of following him. It's as though his achievements are so outlandish that his competitors have to chalk it up to impossible that anyone else be born with Lash's qualities. He's a myth, he's a legend, and that the old records by which to measure greatness still stand strong and true. Lasher opened the doors and walked through. And though we are all peeking through the door watching him go, no one is walking through behind him. After a 220 kilo clean and jerk, the question always again arises as to what he's going to jump to for his heaviest attempt. Occasionally, and almost always on his final heavy-ish day, a few days after this heavy-ish day, he will stop at 220 kilos. So what was he going to do here? I'd seen him go as heavy as 255 kilos in a training hall before, in fact at my first ever time filming him back in 2019. 240 kilos was an exciting jump, but it didn't give much away. In fact, I think the final attempt at 250 kilos, though of course still huge, was slightly lower than he might have done if he wasn't aware of the fact that he'd be clean and jerking an all-time world record 267 kilos seven days later. At that body weight and lifting those weights, big clean and jerks are tough to recover from. You don't see many supers clean and jerking heavy anywhere near as frequently as lighter athletes. He'd also hit 260 kilos in training the week prior. Once again at this point the training hall quietened down, people turned to watch and the phones came out. The pressure to finish this lift off well was palpable. You can see in the slow-mo how prodigious his strength is, how high he pulls the bar and how fast he moves such a heavy mass, 250 kilos, 550 pounds, and everyone just watches him do it. I think his slight head shake towards Georgie was to say that he didn't fancy 260 kilos, and fair enough. And so instead, he finished with some pulls, or a variation of the pull that we've all begun naming Lasher Pulls, a variation that promotes the things he presumably lacks or needs to focus on. Much like with the muscle snatches, it focuses on finishing with the legs, using a bit of the arms, and limiting the thing that he has in more abundance than any other weightlifter ever, his hip extension. And 
And when you look at him pulling 270 kilos, you just think, yeah, we're probably going to see that at some point soon in competition. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video, heading to weightliftinghouse.com if you're in need of any weightlifting accessories, and heading to the Weightlifting House Patreon, where I'm uploading another Lasher session. And of course, if you can't get enough weightlifting in your life, head over to the Weightlifting House Instagram page, where we're posting tons of training hall footage. <laughs> See you soon.